power of love. It's a curious thing. Make a one man whip, make another man ring. Oh, would you guys get your hearts broken too? That's okay, a broken bone always grows stronger. It always heals, heals stronger. I don't know what to do about those pants though. Things that I will share with you in this hike talk, <clears throat> making my problems your solutions, hopefully so you don't have to learn the hard way. I've had about four months to try and assemble some of the problems that might've been my fault in the situation. That way in the future, I can make a better relationship. Every relationship is kind of a mirror to yourself in a way. It will show you your own insufficiencies, etc. And then if you fix those, they won't be insufficiencies anymore. You won't be needing that in somebody else. And then you can both be two full people coming together. Instead of this musical garbage everyone's spewing, and all the movies are spewing as well, and I fell prey to it as well. I thought someone was going to save me, so the only thing I needed to do was find that person and hold on for dear life. <laughs> which is so, so wrong. You shouldn't be <clears throat> two broken people coming together to try and uh, sort of gel into each other and annoy each other. Oh man, I really need somebody's strength because I'm afraid to go to the store by myself. You know, <laughs> that's not gonna be great. You should be able to do everything on your own and then you'll come together to do whatever couples do. Or just, you know, share, share each other's lives together but you shouldn't need anyone. And that was my one of my biggest problems. And everything that you need, or you feel like you need in a partner, is already inside of yourself. You can give it to yourself. And you should not be looking outside and seething for this other person constantly. You should not need this person's validation or need this person's love. You should be able to validate yourself and say, hey, I know your job's pretty thankless, but I inside know that I did a good job. I love myself. I try and have compassion and empathy for myself. I don't need to come to someone and get this stuff. Even though that's nice to have it from somebody, you need to know that people aren't always going to be there. People are never there. They're the most undependable thing in the world. You are the only thing you can depend upon. You and God, you know? That's the only things you can build your foundation upon. You try and build your foundation there, Rihanna's gonna tell you, uh-uh. That's what she's gonna say. Nope. Can't build your foundation on a person. Because a person is like building your house on quicksand. Dumb. The rains come. Oh, look. You know, now I gotta exit my house through the attic. <laughs> don't do that. You gotta build your house upon the rock. If you're still missing that person, don't worry. You're always gonna be a part of them if you kiss them because every time you kiss, you transfer 80 million bacteria in between each other's mouths, which means you could be f helping the other person fight cavities if you have such a good mouth. Her mouth microbiome is now part of mine. So technically, we are forever entwined. And so will we be forever because she's my first love and they say you never forget your first love. John Green puts it in this book, Turtles All the Way Down. You remember that you can love and that you can be able to love and be loved. And that person is kind of a re representation of it. I particularly like the way A.A. A. Milne puts it. You know, how lucky we are to have a relationship that it hurts so much to lose. How lucky is that? How many people really get that? How many people allow themselves to take down all their walls and actually feel that much love or even know that it exists? That is something I've never felt before. Actual, true love. The second I was in her arms, everything Tammy had been telling me for like six months made sense. Infatuation, complete, giving your whole life up to this person, making them your purpose, <clears throat> is not love. That's some sort of uh, chemical, drug-induced coma state. You're basically just using love as a drug. And you're doing it, potentially, to avoid your own problems. Hey, this person has problems, let me try and solve them because I'm too afraid to solve my own. Or maybe this person's problems are the same. You're just trying to solve 
There are problems outside of yourself, but you can never, ever, ever change anybody else. You can barely change yourself. You can try and help somebody, but their change comes from inside. They have to want to change, first of all. You could say it till the day goes green, you know? It's not gonna happen. You just have to be compassionate and empathetic and say, I believe you can do it. And if that thing is really big enough, you know, this is what we're talking about, sacrifice, right? This person isn't, you know, really doing something that you hate. Is it bad enough? You know, to a certain degree, you have to respect yourself and say, I can't do this anymore, you know? This person is not giving me the love I require. I'm a physical lover. They're not giving me physical love. They refuse to. I ask them every day and they forget. All that does is create a lot of pressure on this person and stresses them out because they can feel that they're not who you want them to be and nor should they be. <clears throat> you should accept the person for who they are. And if you can't do that, maybe you don't deserve them, you know? If you can't try and unconditionally love them, flaws and all, it's another thing that I potentially might have messed up, or just didn't know existed, was that love can exist outside of a romantic um, aspect. You know, just because you love someone doesn't mean you have to be in love with them. Or just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Hey, this is a woman who I could be in a relationship with. Doesn't mean you have to, okay? <laughs> just because you could do something doesn't mean you should. You know, you can just be friends. That is a thing that works. You don't have to do this. Just because you can. And the true fact is, you will find somebody else. You are capable of finding somebody who's suitable to you. I know that's hard to do. And it's hard to give up everything we've already gained. All the stuff we've already talked about. All the months we've put in. But if this person is really not good for you, you deserve to have someone who's actually good for you. And who actually loves you for you. And not for what you provide or how you look or the sex that you give. But ultimately, unconditional love comes with a lot of sacrifice. And if you are not down for the sacrifice, I don't know, <clears throat> maybe you don't deserve it, you know? Because if this person is willing to give up their life and everything else that comes with that for you, no, I'm not saying, you know, they're just going to be completely dependent on you, but I'm saying if this person is willing to give you their spare time, I think you should respect them enough to listen to what they have to say and not just wait for your turn to speak. At the end of the day, someone cannot give you something they don't have. You don't go to Home Depot to try and buy groceries, do you? So stop going and looking for love where it doesn't exist, you know, and respect yourself and stop putting yourself out there if that does not exist. You have to become two holes coming together as one because being dependent on somebody is probably the worst thing you could ever do. There's gonna be times when that person's not there at your job, whatever. So if you were to learn yourself to fight your own battles, then you could fight your own battles and you don't need someone to. Don't lead anybody on. That is probably the, one of the worst things you could do to anybody. And I know the feeling of hurt, you know, to feel like, oh, we're on. Oh, now she doesn't feel like it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, she, she said something nice today. Oh, wait, she pulled it back 5,000 miles. What is going on here? <laughs> this has to do with one of the major fundamental pillars of relationship, trust. If I can't believe that you won't be reckless with my heart. How can I trust you with anything else? How can I trust that you are telling me something not to put yourself up or to pull me down for some reason you're feeling bad and you feel like you need to put me down. I told you something in faith and now you're using it against me. That leads to the next pillar, communication. If something hurts me or I don't like you doing something, I need to tell you that and I need to not let that anger and frustration turn into resentment. Where every time I look at you, I just foam at the mouth and I'm like, oh, this person. They don't know that they're doing something that I never told them about. So tell them. This has to deal with another thing that I dealt with. 
fear of abandonment. You feel like if you say anything to this person, it's gonna make them leave and that you're gonna be all alone again. So I just won't tell them anything. Anything that might hurt their feelings. Oh man, I'm just gonna dance around everything. I can't say anything. Oh, oh my. that is the worst because uh, I just can't, <laughs> I can't tell you how bad that is. If a person won't accept you for who you are, they don't deserve you. Because you're an awesome person. You're an amazing, unique, colorful, uh, interesting individual. I know it. I know everyone is extremely amazing. Because, you know, the uh, odds of becoming a human are just so great that how could you not be? What does God make mistakes? And in every situation, there are two sides to every story. There is you getting pissed off at somebody and then there's the other person letting themselves get pissed off. You know, and letting their triggers get pushed, maybe. That's basically what arguments are. Hey, you found a deep core wound in me. Stop pushing it, you know? <clears throat> I know that I have to work on said core wound. So stop bringing it up and stop doing things that bring it up while I get to this. Oh, and that's okay. We can learn to do this just because I was never loved or shown non-judgment, compassion. I can give this to myself just because I thought, you know, I was giving myself empathy and I was loving myself well. Then I saw how badly I was not. Now I can learn from that and give it to myself but you can't give yourself something you don't have or you don't know. That's the whole thing about having tools to fight the war of life. If you don't have the proper tools, you can't get life done properly. You might think this is the best tool in the world, but you know, while you're using a wrench to take off a 14 millimeter bolt, how about we just find the 14 millimeter socket, even though we don't know it exists? It does. There's always a better tool for the job. And sometimes we just need to admit that we've been using the wrong tool for a long time. It's time to pick up a new tool, you know? We're not the Indians. Just, you know, crossbone it up. Guns exist, right? Did the Indians know guns existed until they existed? The, the, the lead with love, that's, that's what I say. Hey, don't forget to lead with love. With people, everybody in your life. If you're thinking about doing something, that doesn't have to do with love at its base, maybe maybe think about it again. Say, why, why, why am I trying to hurt this person? You know, could I possibly maybe try and love them? Because hurting this person is only gonna hurt you. Because then you're gonna say, oh man, I'm a bad person for hurting this person. So maybe, giant leaf blower, rideable leaf blower, look at that. <laughs> I've never seen one of those before. That's something. Battlefield! Battlefield! But as well I've always feel like a battlefield! Fun fact, No Air was the song that I had my first kiss to. I know, right? Pretty cool. Alright.